Psalm 26, with the word of wisdom from our Father, in Jesus' name, verse 1. Judge me, O Lord. This means vindicate or do me justice, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. And this word slide in the Hebrew means to waver, which should remind you of the Zadok, who do not waver during the hour of temptation. As we know from Daniel chapter 11, those written of in Romans chapter 11 as well, who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. They didn't fall for Satan's deception in the first world age, and they're not going to slide or waver when Satan appears as Antichrist at the sixth trumpet. Verse 2, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart, my thoughts and feelings, that is to say, this 26th Psalm being from the point of view of one who genuinely loves our Heavenly Father and looks forward to being used by Him, whether it be today, tomorrow, or God willing, during the sixth trumpet when God's elect are delivered up and the Holy Spirit speaks through them. God's election being them who are called according to His purpose, to quote from verse 28 of Romans chapter 8, and notice in the previous verse of Romans chapter 8 and verse 20, it says, and he that searcheth the hearts. And again, examine me, O Lord, and prove me, try my reins in my heart, to repeat verse 2 of Psalm 26. Verse 3, for thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. The truth of God's word, of course. Stay in the word, and hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, and be blessed. Verse 4, I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. Notice the four listed here, beginning with vain persons, and that word vain in the Hebrew is in the sense of desolating, evil as destructive, literally or morally, figuratively idolatry. Satan is called the desolator whenever he appears in Jerusalem as the false Christ. That word vain meaning desolating, meaning Christians will be made void of the eternal life that was abiding within them before they bowed a knee to Baal. Then next on the list are the dissemblers, which comes from a primitive root in the Hebrew, which means to veil from sight. So those who are hidden or those whose true identity is hidden from most people. Third on the list, you have the congregation of evildoers. And as you can see in your companion Bible, an assembly in its military aspect. So there you're talking about the four stages of the locust army, the gnar, the swarmer, the devourer, and the consumer. Satan's fallen angels, and then you have the wicked, or the wicked one, that you can also read of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That's when the vain persons become desolate, because that's when the wicked one, Satan, appears in his role of Antichrist and makes them desolate. Those are the vain persons being spoken of here with the dissemblers. Again, it means hidden, just as the fig leaf is symbolic of something hidden, the Kenites, that is to say, the generation of vipers who manage the four hidden dynasties and the congregation of evildoers as in Satan's locust army who are his fallen angels. Again, a congregation means an assembly in its military aspect. So there you have the locust army, the gnar, the swarmer, the devourer, and finally the consumer. The four stages of the locust army beginning at the woe of the fifth trumpet with the fourth and final stage, the consumer stage beginning at the sixth trumpet when the wicked one appears as in instead of Christ, the desolator. Verse 6, I will wash mine hands in innocency, so will I compass thine altar, O Lord. I will wash my hands in innocency as opposed to receiving the mark of the beast in the forehead or in the right hand. So will I compass thine altar, O Lord. Verse 7, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works, God's elect being delivered up during the sixth trumpet, which is the consumer stage of the locust army with the Holy Spirit speaking through them in a language understood by whoever hears it, being transmitted throughout the earth, and as Christ told us in Matthew 24, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And you can also read of this in the book of Joel, where you can also read of the four stages of the locust army. Verse 8, Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Christ, that is to say, with you as a Christian being part of that many-membered temple, the many-membered body of the true Christ and all are one in Christ Jesus. Not the many-membered body of the fake rock, which is the fake Christ, but the true rock, the chief cornerstone, which is Christ, 
the true Christ, our sure foundation. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men. That's murderers, spiritually speaking, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. They'll have the mark of the beast in their right hand, meaning they'll follow Satan's orders, the vain persons we read of earlier, that Christ will call workers of iniquity whenever he returns and order them to depart from him. That you'll find written in Matthew chapter 7 as well as Luke chapter 13. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity, redeem me, and that means deliver me as in gather me to you at the seventh trumpet as far as those who are alive and remain at that time are concerned. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. Verse 12, my foot standeth in an even place on the true rock, which is the true Christ, the true word, in the congregations will I bless the Lord. Psalm 27 and verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell, because in their attempt to deceive you, they failed, because you have the seal of God in your forehead, the truth of God's word in your mind, whereby you remain a virgin, spiritually speaking, as opposed to becoming part of the whore of Babylon. Verse 16 of Revelation chapter 17 is where we find out that the ten horns, which are the ten fallen angel kings cast out of heaven with Satan, at the woe of the fifth trumpet, then at the woe of the sixth trumpet, when Satan appears as the false Christ, these ten fallen angel kings shall hate the whore, the whore of Babylon. She was supposed to wait for the true husband and remain a virgin, spiritually speaking, but she became a whore, and those ten fallen angel kings shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Spiritually speaking, not literally, but not so with those who remain virgins, spiritually speaking. Again, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. And look what verse 14 says in Revelation chapter 17. These shall make war with the Lamb, with the true Christ, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Satan's angels will stumble and fall if they come against one of God's elect. They're an army of deception, so they can't hurt you if you know the truth, if you have the seal of God in your forehead. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. And this applies even to this day. Christ gave us power over all our enemies in his name, whereby if Satan sends evil spirits to attack you, all you need do is say, go to the abyss in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they have to listen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear. The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? So you've got nothing to be afraid of, inasmuch as Christ gave you power over Satan and all his evil spirits and all your enemies on this earth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4 One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, my eternal life, that is to say, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. This looking forward ultimately to the eternity, which begins immediately after the great white throne judgment that you can read of in Revelation chapter 20. The eternity being the third world age, which is the true promised land. Verse 5, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me, he shall set me up on a rock, the true rock, which is the true Christ, the time of trouble being the day of the Lord, which is the thousand years. This should actually read, as you can see in your companion Bible, for in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. There are two tribulations. First, Satan's tribulation, which is a five-month period, and that's immediately followed by the return of the true Christ at the seventh trumpet when the thousand-year-long day of the Lord begins. You don't have to be afraid of either of those tribulations if you stay in God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse with understanding. Verse 6, And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. The four hidden dynasties being destroyed at the seventh trumpet by the four carpenters, which are God's full army. This you'll find written of in the last four verses of Zechariah chapter 1, where we learn that the four horns were symbolic of the four hidden dynasties, which have scattered Judah 
Judah, so that no man did lift up his head, these four horns being destroyed when the true Christ returns. And again, verse 6 of Psalm 27 says, And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me, Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy, and these sacrifices you can read of in Ezekiel chapter 44, which takes place during the thousand years. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord, and you don't have to wait until then, because those four carpenters that fray the four horns, which are the four hidden dynasties of education, economics, politics, and religion, on an individual basis, the four carpenters that fray those four hidden dynasties are the words of God. The law, the prophets, the gospels, and the epistles. That's four, and only through God's word can one sidestep the deception of Satan through his children, the generation of vipers, and their four hidden dynasties, which ultimately are destroyed at the seventh trumpet when the true Christ returns, because he is the word of God. So look at the last four verses of Zechariah chapter one on an individual basis, as well as what it ultimately looks forward to, which is the day of the Lord that begins at the seventh trumpet when Satan's role of antichrist as well as his one world system are destroyed and that includes the four hidden dynasties. That will serve as the infrastructure for Satan's one world system but his one world system and his role of antichrist are destroyed at the seventh trumpet and that you can see written of in Revelation chapter 19 verse 20. The seventh trumpet is when all are changed into spiritual bodies including the Kenites and their co-religionists given the opportunity opportunity to stand against Satan after the thousand years are finished, just like everyone else with mortal souls at that time, and go into the third world age as opposed to being blotted out in the lake of fire. Always remember 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. It is not God's will that any should perish in the lake of fire, but that all come to repentance. Verse 7 of Psalm 27, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou said seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. This is following orders, obeying God's commandments, hearkening diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, which is how you receive the blessings written of in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Will God ever leave or forsake you? No. Verse 6 of Deuteronomy chapter 31 says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them, your enemies that will come against you as a Christian, especially during the hour of temptation. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee, he will not fail thee nor forsake thee. We'll see those words be of good courage in the last verse of this 27th Psalm. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. This looking forward to that time when the family members of God's election deliver them up to death. Those who failed to study our Father's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse with understanding will be deceived into thinking that Satan is Jesus. And as Christ told us in Mark 13, the brother shall betray the brother to death. That's one of Satan's names. And the father, the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Not literally he's talking about being delivered up to Antichrist and one of Satan's names is death. Satan is the false Christ, the Antichrist. And what are we told God will do at that time in Psalm 27 verse 10? Then the Lord will take me up, which means he will protect you from being harmed at that time. There shall not an hair of your head perish, as Christ also says in Luke 21 verse 18, speaking of that same time. So again, whom shall I fear? If God be for us, who can be against us? As it's written in Romans chapter 8 verse 31, which speaks of God's elect also. Those who are to be delivered up, at which time the Holy Spirit speaks through them. Verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Verse 12, deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. God's elect will be delivered up, but it isn't going to go the way they expect.
expect it to. When God speaks through his election, people will start to realize the truth that come out of Babylon, which means confusion, and into the truth, the plain path which is set forth in the word of God. They'll return to the true Christ, in other words, and will then be eligible to take part in the first resurrection into eternal life, because the true Christ is the only way to the Father, the way, the truth, and the life. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty, as Christ also said in Luke 21, ye shall be hated of all men for his namesake, for remaining faithful to the true Christ, who is the true rock, and standing against the false rock. Verse 13, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord, and this loses it in the translation. As you can see in your companion Bible, this will be far better translated as I have believed that I shall see the goodness. He knows it of a surety. You know it of a surety. You know exactly where you came from, where you are, and where you're going. So I have believed that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, the land of those who live eternally, that is to say, which is the true promised land, the third world age. Verse 14, wait on the Lord, wait on the true Christ to return at the seventh trumpet, be of good courage, as we also saw in Deuteronomy 31. God will never leave you nor forsake you, and he shall strengthen thine heart. He shall strengthen your mind through his word. So stay in it, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, every day, now more than ever. Wait, I say, on the Lord.